Hi again then all, and welcome to the very first speed tune in GT7, and in what I could think of no better way of a throwback to my original tuning days way back in 2013, when the channel really got started, we're going to go straight in with the Chaparral 2J. Now in terms of the performance, there's not that much that you can do to it, if you already own the car you know this. I would recommend having NOS, although it is expensive at 100 grand. This tune doesn't need NOS, but it certainly does help. I would recommend racing soft tyres to get, of course, the maximum amount of grip. You will need the race customizable gearbox as well. And I don't recall if it has the race suspension already fitted or not, but you'll definitely need that. Now, in terms of the settings, let's jump into this. Of course, for the first time in Gran Turismo history, at least that I can recall, this is where tuning will affect your performance points. So as you can see, this one's sitting at 903 points. You can see the racing soft tyres there. As far as the suspension, I've actually not gone too crazy for suspension, for the diff, for that kind of stuff, because, crucially with this car, I wanted this to be a tune that you could use for top speed, but that you don't necessarily need to change to drive it on a circuit either. So this is a best of both worlds tune setup that you can win on Le Mans, or race against, you know, Group 1s on Route X, but then you can use the exact same tune to take on corners as well. So, with that in mind, I have lowered the ride height, which in theory with this car should give you even more grip, and the performance points do indicate that it does improve the handling. Anti-roll and the dampers frequency, I've left that all basically stock. I've changed the camber angle just a little bit to 1.5 on the front, two on the back. I've gone for neutral toe so that you're not dragging the tyres. I know some people do like to run some toe, so I'll leave that down to you. I prefer not to, for the reason that I just mentioned about dragging those tyres. The diff I haven't touched because it already feels pretty good to me. It certainly isn't twitchy for high-end speed, so I wouldn't say you really need to change that unless you want to. The NOS, as I said, I have fitted. I've got it set all the way for power. There are some circumstances where you cannot use NOS, so obviously time trials. Uh, you can use it on quick race events, I think it is, or, or at least custom events. I'm not sure about quick races. And in career mode, you can use it as well. And I'll show you in just a second how fast it can go with the NOS as well. For the gearbox, obviously that's the most important thing. Fully customizable race gearbox, which gives you another two whole gears to work with for the first time ever when tuning the Chaparral, which is a huge advantage than the three-speed. For the auto adjustment, that's just set on 360, which is what it already is. The real important thing is here in the manual adjustments. I would recommend 2.3, 1550, 1100, 825, and then that's sh well, that should be on 620, but as you can see, it kind of jumps over 620 a little bit. Uh, it's a bit glitchy sometimes, the tuning in this game. I suspect they'll patch that. And then for the final drive, I've gone, as you can see, for 3.5. Again, this is designed to do both, speed and circuits. So with that in mind, I wanted it to be a tune that could sit at a good speed, but that also gives you a good amount of draft potential, as I like to call it. So it's not a car that you're immediately hitting the red line and slowing down. You can cruise with a little bit of excess RPM in the top end, so you can get in behind, you know, a faster supercar or whatever on Lasart or Route X, or use the NOS and get an extra 20 plus miles an hour quicker. And again, you'll see that in just a second. As far as the ballast, of course, we're running none of that. The ECU is on 100%. You cannot adjust the downforce. As far as the rest, there's not that much you can do to it, as I said. You can do the drift steering angle change. I have not done that. And obviously, you can toggle whether you want it on or off anyway if you do buy it. It doesn't seem like it would be all that necessary for this car. So I've opted not to, but if you want to, of course, that's down to you. With that in mind, though, that's it for the tuning. Now we will take it out to Route X to show you what it can actually do. So as you'll see in this actual event against Group 1 cars in particular, the top speed does change on Route X, and I'm sure it's not the only car that this applies to, depending on which of the straights you're driving on, which is a little bit odd. I'm maybe attributing that down to like wind direction or track temperature or weather. I'm not really sure why they're doing it that way because it's a pretty big difference. So on the home straight, this thing will cruise up around 237, 238, completely on its own. On the other straight, after the first corner, it will run about 245, I think it is, or whatever the speed is, you'll see it in the video because I'll post it. So it does fluctuate just a little bit. Then, if you slipstream, you've got, as I said, tons of potential there to go, you know, 250, 260. 
And then as I go down the hill, as you'll have probably already seen, if you do engage the NOS, especially with some slipstream, you can easily get it up around the 264, 265 region, if not even more, if you are behind a quick enough car. So something like a, you know, my Ford GT, for example, is already running up around 260 miles an hour. I haven't finished tuning that one yet. So if you get in behind something like that, you could feasibly go even quicker. So when you're relying on NOS and slipstream, it's a very, very fast car. If you opt to just run it completely on its own, you know, maybe you don't want NOS, etc. Then you could do like 238 to 242 plus, depending on which side of the track you're on for some weird reason, like I said. But overall, that's it for this tune. Of course, I will be releasing a lot more tunes, not just for speed. I'll probably do some drag tunes, maybe some drift ones, definitely some circuit tunes as well. So stick around for that and click the playlist on screen to see all of my Gran Turismo content. But until next time, I'll see you then. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.